Five suspects have been shot and killed in a shootout with police at a block of flats in Glenwood in Durban. Police say the suspects were wanted for the murder of a drug lord and his family a week ago. They added that one of the dead suspects is a well-known drug kingpin who was wanted for several crimes in KwaZulu-Natal. While some of us go on with our normal everyday life, some people are making real life movies every day with a fleshy lifestyle, fancy wife, and drive-by shootings. That was a normal life for a Durban kingpin pushing poison in the community. The streets call them Puff, government named Brandon Kalicharan, a former Chetsworth kingpin who was alleged to have been a leader of the notorious 11th Street Gang. You see, Brandon is alleged to have been pushing a drug distribution empire in Durban, where he supplied the way to street gangs. It is said that he kept his guns blazing to put his enemies in check and drive-by shootings was one of his preferred methods of dealing with his rivals. Now some say the key to his success was forging ties to street gangs across Durban, including the feared cartel gang in Wentworth. He owned several high-performance sports cars with millions of friends, threw fleshy parties and wore only the best clothes. Always by his side was his wife Jikonia, who embraced the lifestyle and was known for her expensive taste. Now who was Brandon? Puff Kalichan. First of all, in Springfield Park, two people believed to be a drug lord and his wife were killed in a drive-by shooting. A nine, injured nine-year-old was rushed to hospital but has sadly also passed away. Well, Gareth, right now we do understand that the police are wrapping up their work. I just want to step out of shot and show you exactly what they're doing. Um, the forensics team just finished um, at the scene and we do understand that um, three people were killed this afternoon in this shooting. The name was all over the news after the triple homicide that claimed the lives of his daughter, wife and himself on Human Rights Day when they were out shopping for party decors and gifts for the birthday party of his daughter that was going to be in a week's time from the day of the incident. Brandon grew up in Crossmore, Chetsworth. He lost his father at an early age and was raised by a single mother in Universal Place Road, considered a nicer part of Chetsworth because it had freestanding houses compared to the flats. His entry into the cutthroat world of gangs and drugs began in the early 2000s when he left his job in a clothing factory shop to go work for Kelvin Kellis Naidu, who owned Fat Fun clothing shops in Chetsworth and Phoenix. Now, according to police sources, these legitimate shops were a mere front for a lucrative drug record. In 2008, Kelvin was shot and killed in a drive-by shooting by the Dre Boys gang. Three members of the Dre Boys were convicted of the murders and were sentenced to life in prison. It was during this period that Brandon began getting deep in the Chetsworth underworld. He moved away from the clothing business and opened a tavern from where he plotted his expansion. However, the Dre Boys stood in his way, which ended up in a bloody gang war in which several people were killed in drive-by shootings between 2008 and 2011. Police were unable to pin any of the murders on Brandon. Now, after consolidating his power in Chetsworth, Brandon turned his business into a drug wholesale operation rather than street pushing, where he would sell large quantities of poison to the street gangs across Durban. During a birthday celebration, he and his wife styled themselves as a modern day Bonnie and Clyde in a video with background music and slow motion effects of them pulling out their guns. You see, he openly posted videos and pictures with leaders of various gangs, including the notorious cartel gang from Wentworth. As Brandon's empire grew and bodies around him continued piling up, the KwaZulu Natal anti-gang unit under the organized crime unit began honing in on him from around 2020. Now raids were conducted at his home. He was arrested on eight different charges on drugs, unlicensed firearms, attempted murder and murder. Now police were unable to make any of these charges stick. You see, it was alleged that he had a lot of policemen in his pocket. Now on the day of the shooting on the 21st of March, on Peters Road in Springfield Park, an industrial zone in Durban, 
Heavily armed gunmen pulled up alongside the family's VW Amarok and sprayed it with bullets. More than 50 rounds of high caliber bullets penetrated the car. Brendan and Jaconia were struck multiple times and died on the scene. Their nine-year-old daughter was still alive by the time paramedics arrived and was rushed to hospital. She would later succumb to her injuries. You see, this story made headline news because of how brutal the crime was and a nine-year-old little girl was killed. On the 31st of March, police spotted a vehicle fitting the description of the one used in a drive-by shooting that killed Brandon and his family. Now, following the investigation into the triple homicide case, police were led to a lavish home in Morningside where they did a sting operation. Five suspected drug dealers got into a shootout with the police and the suspects were shot and killed. Now, these guys were believed to have been involved in the triple homicide case that killed Brandon and his family. Drugs, money and firearms were seized during the sting operation. One of the suspects who was killed by the police was an alleged kingpin from Wentworth by the name of Bevan Loftus. Bevan, who was from Reche Road Flats in Wentworth, media reports say he started his own drug ring and there were allegations of numerous murders of which he was wanted for. It is also alleged that Bevan's father, who was a cop, was also working with his son in his criminal endeavors. And on the scene of the shooting, a military R4 stick was found in the suspect's house. You see, Bevan was known to be involved in the taxi business in the past, but some say he later muscled his way into the towing truck business and pushed some players out. Now, shortly after, he was rumored to have been involved in selling drugs. Now, the news of Bevan's death was a relief to some community members because some people were saying Bevan and his gang were terrorizing Wentworth. Terrifying details of how one man and his gang held part of Durban to ransom for years are now emerging. Police shot and killed elusive gangster Bevan Loftus and four others last month. Some are even celebrating his death. In the second part of a focus on Durban's drug wars, ENC senior reporter Desen Tatia speaks to those caught up in the middle of it. Bevan Loftus, a name some communities would rather forget. The man behind it has earned the reputation of a ruthless gangster, responsible for a trail of crimes. In March, police finally got the breakthrough they needed. It came after Loftus and his gang shot dead a rival drug lord and his family. They were subsequently killed by police when officers came under fire during a tactical operation in Morningside, Durban. I think this was the first time that uh, the police actually saw me up. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what, a, what a hidden person he was, you know. So the, the, uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just so happy that this man is dead now. And the, the shootings in the Venture area and the uh, shootings in the Mere Bank area they would, be, would, be, would be minimized now that he's not around, you know. The police did a great job in what they did. Now, Bevan's father, who's out on bail, Gregory Loftus, has commissioned a private investigation into the police shooting that left his son dead. He's accusing the Hawks of running a hit squad. He says the police were out to kill his son from the first place and they were paid to do so by drug dealers. Now the Directorate for Priority Crime Investigation has rubbished these claims. You know, there's this thing going around that Bevan's a drug dealer. Bevan's not a drug dealer, Bevan's a legitimate businessman. The amazing thing is that the actual drug dealers collude with the police and are creating this narrative. It's hard to believe, but that's actually what happened. Has Bevan ever killed anyone? No. And two, was he ever at any point involved in the drug trade? No. That, okay, let me say this. Not that I know of. When he first started, when I knew him, he was a taxi owner, which is for then he ran taxis. From taxis, he opened up tow trucks. And opening up tow trucks, he didn't buy tow trucks. He took people honest lovings, people that were in the towing industry from when I was, before I was born, he shut them down. These people, all they know, their whole life is towing. So that's where this came from with taxis. Then he went into towing and from towing, the greed led him to 
drugs. Yeah, he sells drugs. He is not a businessman. He is one of the most notorious people from our area. At the time of his death, Loftus was linked to more than 60 cases 